Welcome to the clinical refresher for radiography of the femur. This module was written by Susie Mosley, B.S., R.T.R., and Megan Lemp, B.A., B.A. After completing this module, you will be able to Describe the patient preparation requirements for radiography of the femur. Explain how to position a patient for a femur examination. Summarize the technical settings and patient instructions necessary to produce a diagnostic image. Identify major structures seen on femur radiographs. List the evaluation criteria used to determine image quality. The femur is generally examined using two projections, an AP and a lateral projection. When a patient is too tall for the entire femur to be included on a single image, the radiographer performs a projection of the proximal or distal femur to include the joint nearest to the particular area of interest. Some departments may require a separate projection of the other joint to be performed as well. If a patient has an implanted orthopedic device, it must be imaged in its entirety on both projections. Clear communication with the patient will ensure that a proper patient history is acquired and that the patient will comply with all instructions. It is generally good practice to explain the procedure to a patient before exam positioning so that any questions can be answered immediately. Patient history includes a discussion of any known anatomical variants that may impact the exam, as well as any medical devices implanted in the area of interest. For example, technical factors will need to be adjusted if a patient has a joint replacement or severe arthritis. Patients must remove all clothing and jewelry in the area of interest and are provided with a gown to provide privacy and prevent the patient from getting cold. The AP projection of the femur is performed with the patient position supine on the radiographic table and the leg extended. Make sure the patient's pelvis is not rotated. The affected femur is centered to the midline of the image receptor. A projection of the proximal femur includes the hip joint. For the proximal projection, the patient's leg is internally rotated 10 to 15 degrees from anatomical position in order to visualize the femoral neck in profile. A sandbag or positioning sponge can be used to help the patient maintain the correct position if needed. The top of the image receptor is placed at the level of the anterior superior iliac spine, or ASIS. A projection of the distal femur includes the knee joint. For the distal projection, the patient's leg is rotated internally until the foot is vertical and the leg is in true anatomical position. Make sure that the femoral epicondyles are parallel with the plane of the image receptor. The bottom of the image receptor is positioned 2 inches or 5 centimeters below the knee joint. The central ray is directed perpendicularly to the midpoint of the femur and the center of the image receptor. Anatomical markers are placed on the image receptor to identify the anatomical side that is being examined. The patient's gonads are shielded and the shield is placed between the x-ray source and the patient. The patient is instructed to hold very still, but no breathing instructions are necessary. A 14 by 17 inch or 35 by 43 centimeter image receptor is used for an AP projection of the femur and is adjusted lengthwise. The SID is set at a minimum of 40 inches, although some departments may require a longer SID. Collimation is adjusted to 1 inch or 2.5 centimeters on both sides of the leg and remains at 17 inches or 43 centimeters in length. 87.5 kVp is a common setting for AP projections and generally a grid is used. Automatic exposure control may be used to achieve the proper mass setting for radiography of the femur. However, common mass settings for a proximal femur projection are 7.1 mass when using digital radiography and 14 mass when using computed radiography. Common settings for a distal femur projection are 3.6 mass for digital radiography and 7.1 mass for computed radiography. A small focal spot is selected with all settings. The AP projection shows most of the femur and includes the hip joint, knee joint, or both. In adults, two images are generally necessary to demonstrate the femur in its entirety. The following quality criteria should be used to determine if an AP femur radiograph has been produced with proper positioning and technical factors. Collimation and gonadal shielding does not obscure relevant anatomy, and most of the femur and the joint closest to the area of interest is visualized. 
The femoral neck is not foreshortened on the proximal femur, and most or all of the lesser trochanter is not visible beyond the medial border of the femur. There is no knee rotation on the distal femur, and orthopedic devices, when present, are displayed in their entirety. The radiograph also displays soft tissue and bony trabecular detail. The lateral projection is performed with the patient lying on the affected side and the knee flexed approximately 45 degrees. The femur is centered to the midline of the image receptor. To examine the proximal femur, draw the unaffected leg posteriorly and rest it on a positioning sponge or sandbag for support. To prevent superimposition, rotate the pelvis posteriorly approximately 10 to 15 degrees from the lateral position. The top of the image receptor is positioned at the level of the ASIS. To examine the distal femur, draw the unaffected leg forward and rest it on a positioning sponge or sandbag at the level of the hip. Make sure there is minimal superimposition of the opposite thigh over the femur of interest. The patient can also draw the unaffected leg posteriorly if preferred. Make sure the pelvis is in a true lateral position. A sandbag or positioning sponge is placed under the ankle, and the patient's body position is adjusted until the femoral epicondyles are perpendicular to the plane of the image receptor. The bottom of the image receptor is positioned 2 inches or 5 centimeters below the knee joint. The central ray is directed perpendicularly to the midpoint of the femur and the center of the image receptor. If the patient can't be turned onto the affected side due to a suspected fracture or destructive disease, a cross-table lateral projection can be performed with the patient positioned supine and the central ray directed horizontally. Anatomical markers are placed on the image receptor to identify the anatomical side that is being examined. The patient's gonads are shielded, and the shield is placed between the x-ray source and the patient. The patient is instructed to hold very still, but no breathing instructions are necessary. A 14 by 17 inch or 35 by 43 centimeter image receptor is used for a lateral projection of the femur and is adjusted lengthwise. The SID is set at a minimum of 40 inches, although some departments may require a longer SID. Collimation is adjusted to 1 inch or 2.5 centimeters on both sides of the leg and remains at 17 inches or 43 centimeters in length. 87.5 kVp is a common setting for lateral projections and generally a grid is used. Automatic exposure control may be used to achieve the proper mass setting for radiography of the femur. However, common mass settings for a proximal femur projection are 7.1 mass when using digital radiography and 14 mass when using computed radiography. Common settings for a distal femur projection are 3.6 mass for digital radiography and 7.1 mass for computed radiography. A small focal spot is selected with all settings. The lateral projection shows approximately three-quarters of the length of the femur and includes the hip joint or knee joint. In adults, two images are generally necessary to demonstrate the femur in its entirety. The following quality criteria should be used to determine if a lateral femur radiograph has been produced with proper positioning and technical factors. Collimation does not obscure relevant anatomy, and most of the femur and the joint closest to the area of interest is displayed. Orthopedic devices, when present, are visible in their entirety along with soft tissue and bony trabecular detail. If the knee is included, the superimposed anterior surface of the femoral condyles are visible, as well as the patella in profile. The open patellofemoral space is displayed, and the inferior surface of the femoral condyles is not superimposed due to the divergence of the X-ray beam. If the hip is included, the opposite thigh does not superimpose the proximal femur and hip joint. The greater trochanter is superimposed over the distal femoral neck, and the lesser trochanter is visible on the medial aspect of the proximal femur. This concludes the clinical refresher for radiography of the femur.